face of the stiffest competition yet from Ford and their all-new Fairlane. But what Chevrolet was about to do to their competition was almost unfair. Stay with us for the textbook American car, the 57 Chevy, when we return on the American muscle car. After two years of a bull market in the auto business, Detroit's auto stylists were pulling out all the stops. Mopar's forward look cars and the fantastic 57 Fords were packed with everything car buyers wanted. But pulling off a miracle, Chevrolet's designers had gotten another year out of the 55's body shell while making it look like a completely different car. Continuing the longer, lower, wider theme, the 57's cowl was lowered an inch and a half, which made it necessary to move the interior fresh air vents. These were relocated to the eyebrows above the headlights. On Bel Air models, an optional gold anodized trim package replaced many of the car's chrome and stainless steel pieces, like the grill and the Chevrolet script. The car now rode on 14-inch wheels instead of 15s, as in years past. Its wheelbase remained the same, at 115 inches, but its overall length had increased to almost 17 feet. Contributing to this length was the classiest set of tail fins ever to come out of GM's design studio. On Bel Air's, these fins were highlighted by a striking accent piece, made of embossed stainless steel. Interiors were even more luxurious this year, especially in the Bel Air models. And the dash was redesigned, clustering the gauges in front of the driver in a cockpit layout. No fewer than 57 luxury and performance options were listed on Chevy's order form. The 57s were the fastest Chevrolets yet, and after a ride in one, it was obvious that more Corvette engineering was finding its way into these cars. The 265 was still the standard V8, but this year the world got its first glimpse of the legendary 283. 283s were 265s bored out an eighth of an inch, but that little eighth of an inch made a huge difference. Six different versions of this engine were available. Five of these were carbureted, from the two-barrel equipped 170 horse engine up to the 270 horse unit with two four-barrel Rochesters. But the big news for 1957 was the new Rochester ramjet fuel injection, which helped this little engine produce one horsepower per cubic inch. Fuel injection was a $550 option, and it helped 57 Chevys race from 0 to 60 in 7.2 seconds, almost three seconds faster than the carbureted versions. Chevy took home NASCAR's Manufacturer's Trophy at the Daytona Speed Weeks in 1957, sweeping the competition in every class in which it competed. By year's end, the 1957 Chevrolet had sold 1,522,536 cars. Even though Ford had produced more 1957 models, Chevrolet outsold their arch rival by 130 cars. Among these million and a half 57 Chevys were 6,103 of these jewels the Nomad. Chevrolet produced a handful of these sporty two-door wagons in 55, 56, and 57, never selling enough to make back their tooling costs. 1957 would be the last year for this rarest of the Tri-5 models, although the Nomad name would linger on for a few more years on conventional station wagons. With the 55 through 57 models, Chevrolet had made the transition from making plain, low-cost transportation to making stylish cars for every man. But when the 1958s were introduced, they signaled the end of an era. Some said the 58s went a little too far. They said it again in 59. Chevy would take the longer, lower, wider trend to the extreme before it would again make a car with the charm and simple style of the 55, 56, and 57. But no other car from Chevrolet would ever be so beloved by its owners. Very few car makers anywhere in the world have put together three back-to-back -back winners like the 55, 56, and 57 Chevy. 
There might have been faster cars, or more sporty cars, or more luxurious ones. But no other cars can do what these cars do. They make you remember when. The Tri-5 Chevys remind us of a time in American history when, when uh, neighborhoods were neighborhoods, when the focus was on family. It's an era we can be proud of as Americans. Can your car do that? Thanks for watching. And please, don't crush them, restore them.